Crows and ravens are often confused by people as the same bird, but there is a big difference between them. Firstly, ravens are much larger than crows. Another difference is their beak, with the ravens being chunky, gray-black, and menacing looking, whereas crow beaks are modest. If you want a full breakdown of their differences, check out this video from Raven Diaries. Link will be in the description below. Before I begin, I want to let you know that this video is mostly about crows, but there will be some mention of the raven as well. Here we go. Number 10. A group of crows is called a murder of crows. More than one explanation exists for the origin of this term, which comes from superstitions and folk tales. But murder of crows mostly reflects a time when groupings of many animals had colorful and poetic names. A group of ravens is called a conspiracy or unkindness, again going back to the superstitions surrounding them and poetic naming. Number 9. Crows love to hang out at cemeteries, but you should know that other birds do as well. The reason is most likely because cemeteries are usually big open areas with large trees, which is perfect since they form large communal roosts in like open areas. Also, the grass is kept short, which makes it easy for them to find insects to eat. Number 8. Crows and ravens will and have ate human flesh. It's been suggested that in Eurasia and North America, ravens probably consume more human flesh than any other animal. In fact, ancient battlefields littered with corpses attracted large flocks of ravens. Unfortunately, this earned them the unfair title as Harbingers of Death, which is weird when you think about it because it was actually people who brought death, not the ravens. They were simply just taking advantage of a source of food. Number 7. Ravens and crows are pretty smart, sometimes a little too smart. Crows have fantastic problem-solving skills and can manufacture and use tools to obtain food items. In the wild, there have been reports of ravens hauling up fishing line out of ice holes to get the fish. They watch and wait until the fishermen leave and then get to work. Sneaky clever raven. Also, ravens have been shown to be as good as us at pre-planning tasks and they can also barter. If you want to read more about this, I will leave a link to the article in the description below. Number 6. They will eat almost anything. As I already mentioned, human flesh is on the menu, but some other things include insects, fruit, bird eggs and nestlings, corn, and even human vomit. Yuck, I think they may have taken opportunistic eating a little too far. Number 5. Ravens are excellent mimics and can imitate human speech. In fact, a lot better than parrots because they can mimic the deep resonant tone of a man or a higher pitched tone of a woman. Their voices are incredibly and eerily quite accurate to that of humans. If you didn't know any better, you'd be convinced that someone was playing a trick on you. If you are skeptical, just check out Mischief the Talking Raven, Terry the Talking Raven, Julian, or Raymond a Wild Talking Raven. I will leave links in the description below. Number 4. Crows have an almost creepy fascination with humans and are always watching us. Because of this, they have learned to recognize certain human faces, and they don't forget a face either, a good or bad one. What's more is that they tell each other about these good and bad people, so don't cross them or you will end up with a mob of crows harassing you, cawing at, and perhaps even dive bombing you. Number 3. Captive crows give their owners names. This can be identified by a unique sound they only ever make around their owner. So who's the pet here, really? Number 2. Crows gather around their dead, which is often described as being eerily similar to a funeral. It's thought that they do this to learn that the place and responsible party is dangerous. Number 1. Occasionally, they murder each other. Usually this occurs with members outside of their family and may be a result of defending their mates, food, or territory boundaries. It's thought that when a fight results in the death of one of the crows, it might be because one of the participants was much weaker and just couldn't take the assault or misjudged something and got killed accidentally. 
Kevin McGowan, an expert on crows who has a bachelor's science in zoology, also suggested that the bird could have already been injured or sick, and the healthy crow saw what was basically a walking lure for a predator and tried to off it, so it didn't attract dangers to them. Have any interesting and creepy stories to share of your experience with crows and ravens? Leave a comment below, and don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. It's greatly appreciated. Also, until November the 13th, I have t-shirts available. So if you have a love for chickadees, and if you love what I do and want to help support me, follow the link in the description below. Thanks for watching and for your time. Happy birding!